Hey guys, welcome back to Filter Coffee Football. Uh, disappointing result today again. Back to back losses. Uh, back to back losses to teams that really Arsenal were hoping to get three points over. Um, this time we're talking about Arsenal one, Brighton two. Uh, wow. I mean, let's start with the the biggest question right at this point. Top four. Yes, God, I mean. We are recording this after Spurs smashed Villa four goals to nil. That's nine goals in the last two matches. So, and I think over the last five matches, I believe it's it's twenty two goals that they have scored now. So, Oof. Spurs side. I think top, really... top four is still doable. Top four is still doable. Just believe in it. And eight finals, eight more finals. Just uh, today was a tactical mistake. Um, I mean. Odegaard and Emil together in the center does not work. We've seen that earlier and it failed. I think Mikel needs to just stick to the basics. I mean, I understand the fact where Mikel went on to change something, but you don't change something already when there are some more changes that have happened inadvertently. So, mm -hmm. I mean, don't fix, don't change. Too many pieces of the puzzle if you miss some other pieces. Yeah, I mean, this essentially, is what I'm he saying. introduced an entirely new midfield in the game, you know, with party out, uh, right. Jaka at that left back position. We're playing with a completely new midfield, two of which players are used to playing in much more attacking advanced positions, and Lukonga, who's not really a holding player to begin with. Um, of course, not to mention, uh, I, I worry for Nuno Tavares at this point because despite bad form to not be picked, the only available fit left back and to not be picked to start the game, I think that probably hurts him morale wise even more so. I, I get I get that he, he's poor on form, but that's the reason he's in the team is to be that backup for Tierney. Uh, so, you know, maybe have him start the game, but modify his role. Don't give him so many attacking responsibilities, but play him. Because at this point with Tierney out for the rest of the season, Tavares is going to have to play at least some games. For sure. So, might as well get him in the squad, give him some protection. Brighton is probably the easier fixture to get him that sort of uh, start to kind of build back his confidence anyway. So, um, and, and clearly again, taking Xhaka out of that midfield made a big difference because coming out into the second half, Xhaka in that advanced role, Arsenal looked a lot, lot better. We created a lot better. We had a lot more control in that midfield. So, Xhaka needs to be in that midfield. He needs to be in that more progressive passing role that he has been uh, throughout the you know the last few weeks for us uh, but again let's let's quickly touch base on uh, on Brighton before we talk more about that Arsenal performance a very Two contained, very good goals yeah Two a very, very good contained goals. performance they, they were really uh, they showed Arsenal a lot of respect in many ways you know they let Arsenal have the ball despite Brighton being a team who likes to have the ball most of the times um, but again they they went back to the familiar trait of chop down Saka and like get away with it, which uh, which now seems so stupid at this point where you're targeting a young English player who's going to be a potential superstar and you're just targeting his legs. You're not trying to play football here. That does not make sense to me, however good of a team you may be. But you've got to realize football is more than just getting away with fouling opponents. I thought today's game was a uh, was shambolic in terms of refereeing and in terms of how the game played out yeah i mean lots of lots of soft fouls given more so against arsenal you know probably fouls that probably did not need to stand which again i had an issue with as well but as for your point i guess uh, that's that is sort of the 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 root one mentality right when you have a team that's better than you the only way to get around them is to bring them down and it shows a different dimension to. In some ways, I appreciate that uh, that uh, Brighton is able to, you know, that Graham Potter is able to give their team that other dimension of just being rough and physical. Um, something that Arsenal did have somewhat, but you know, didn't bring to the fore this match so much. Lacazette again, second match in a row, not quite there, not quite present in that attack. Did not make make an impact there. Saka again, run ragged across the pitch you know, multiple fouls and trying to, you know, shift from left to right, trying to make something happen. Odegaard had an incredible game again, but 
just wasn't able to you know i mean the the goal was spectacular very lucky touch going in there the I mean, deflection yeah yeah it kind of but seemed the sort of luck that arsenal did deserve on the back of hitting the bar twice in like one second apart right um, odegaard is the next captain you can see it in him i mean if this game was not a testament to that i don't know what is because that that is who should be your next captain he has the fight in him he's getting the team to rally around and making an impact i think i think give the armband to him like work around with the youngsters yeah I this mean, is makes, this is up to mikel now it, it makes absolute sense he was even dictating the pace of play at some portions of the game you know trying to really keep the game ticking keep it moving he was the focal point in many ways and more and more as i watch him play every game even when he has a bad game he is still the leader on the pitch still which better. which is yeah. uh, which is really good to know and um, again he's in my eyes as well now winning the race for that for that captain's armband um, i had him as captain the first day <laughs> first day of the season i know he's a captain for norway like if you're a national team captain you have to have some worth apart from a certain three line captain who's <laughs> literally nothing you you but, can't yeah. make a point and then cut it down yourself the very next second so let's let's not get into that portion though but um again it's it's going to be a tough tough run because um i i did not hear the final verdict on party but i know for a fact that he is not going to be available for the next game uh, as right. well uh, so it's at this point arteta will have to make another change because it, it's clear that jack at left back just did not work Uh, some Thomas say, Partey is not going to be back till at least May. That's for sure. Yeah, and and that's the thing, right? Where uh, you may blame Jaka for that for the first goal, but two things. First off, it's not his position to begin with. I mean, he's not an out and out left back, so to expect him to it be was not his in that goal. position, it was not his is, mistake at all. Yeah, and that, that, that's that's like that's yeah. that's that's one thing. And secondly, like you mentioned, he's the one who actually started the press that led to the ball going deep for Brighton. it all, it was almost like a clearance that happened to catch the right player for them uh exactly. my critique is more for the midfield again that didn't drop back and did not intercept the cutback i mean both goals were cutbacks that is where a player like party makes his presence that is where party plugs the gap and that is where we conceded the goals and that was the issue again today so um that is something that arteta will have to address because when you concede two absolutely similar goals it comes down to a system problem as opposed to individual errors or form or performance so that's something that i'm hoping that arteta will address um i i'm blanking on who we face next i think that's that's one southampton of our, yes so that's that's again southampton got uh, again beaten quite badly today by chelsea shipped six goals it's going to be tricky because they might be in a position to want to bounce back at the same time they right. can be in a position where morale is low and they might let us uh, take take some easy points which at this point given our team we probably need an easy win um i'm telling you right i'm telling you again it's eight finals look at each game as a final there's no easy games here there are no easy games honestly yeah, at this point uh, we are equal on points with spurs spurs are up on goal difference equal on matches equal on points so it's just going to be a straight straight race to the finish we have to the derby is game. going to be big the exactly derby we have to win every single huge. game in hand and we do that and we get top 4 it's going to be difficult but the only real real tough fixtures that we have are that chelsea game and uh, obviously the, the derby so tough tough run in going in players missing it's going to be a lot trickier as well this is going to be a true test of arteta as a manager to see how he can a rally the team and b find a system that reinvigorates the kind of form that we saw before the international break so we forgot conveniently to talk about probably the biggest incident in the match that as arsenal fans of course we had to touch up on and of course in the meantime that <laughs> it took us to realize that we didn't speak about it i went and got a makeover so if you like it let me know if you don't like it don't let me know still let uh, me know <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah let's let's talk about that offside incident good lord heading into half time we got an equalizer it was that would have been the perfect way to end that half for arsenal especially given that we were really trying to get yep. in towards the end of that half and then 
it took we are close to 5 minutes like 4 minutes and a few seconds or something to finally decide that it was offside 4 minutes they, again they decision. didn't have they didn't have any clarity on why it was offside because everyone was talking about it even the commentators were like oh it's ambiguous there's no definite it looked onside to me i mean Sa- I, for me i thought that sanchez was keeping martinelli onside but clear and obvious right so, clear and obvious that's the whole point of var is clear and obvious and they completely if it takes you as long as extra time to make a decision just don't try and make that decision at that point let the on field decision stand i would i was going to say the same thing where <laughs> i mean if ambiguity has ruled over so much that you can't put like you can't even pixel peep or put scales and rulers and digital measurements and what not and still not come up with a definite answer then might as well let the on field umpire on field referee go with his decision initially and that might end up biting teams too but this time could have been to arsenal's favor but again should the fa and the pgm well you never know I mean, they really need to sort this out. It's, it's honestly as simple as that. If if VR is there to make sure that you know you don't come out of the stadium as a disgruntled fan, you don't switch your television off at the end of a full time as a disgruntled fan because the decision was based on absolute concrete fact. There is no way you can refute it. That has not happened. So the basic fundamental for VR has not been achieved. I you have are always... forgetting one thing. You are <laughs> forgetting one thing, honestly. <laughs> VAR is run by the same incompetent people who officiate the game on the ground. How do you think that's going to be different? That's my point, ah. Huh? And again, yeah, like I, I still maintain this that come next season they need to make a very simple addition to the VAR principle. If if video assistant technology cannot help you make a decision within a minute of reviewing it on camera, just let the on-field decision stand. at that point, a minute maybe 2 minutes okay that's really stretching them out but it's a 90 minute game 2 minutes is a lot of time in 90 minutes if if you if you take longer than that duration to make a decision then just don't try to jump in at that point it is too complicated of a decision at that point it is not clear and obvious at that point just let the on field decision stand stand anyway uh, that was us talking about the whole var point and uh, yeah we are end to the edit of the video so this is where the video will now be ending so thank you so yeah. much for tuning in thank you so much for putting up with that little bit of a rant at the end and yeah uh, like share subscribe as always and we will see you guys next time yeah. next Bye. time